Should I pull for a Venturine? That is one of the big questions going on in Honkai Star at the moment, especially after the release of Acheron, and also the story that came with it. Because if you don't know, the story that just came out is pretty much all to do with a Venturine, and you know, a Venturine plays a massive part in it. I won't actually spoil it for you. But also, his unit is next to be released. And many players are wondering, well, should I pull for him? Is he even that good? And at first, whenever I saw him and Acheron, I thought, well, you know, it's obvious. I'm going to pull on Acheron because she looks so much cooler. And even just trying her out now, her damage is amazing. And honestly, I'm so happy that I pulled her and her light comb because she just does so much for my teams. But Aventurine just didn't really strike me as a character that I would pull for. But in the recent story, we actually got to try out his skills and abilities, which is amazing as we can actually go through them today and answer the question, should you pull for him? Or is it worth saving up your gems for a character like Robin or Boot Hill who come out in probably the next update or the update after that? So if you don't know, Aventurine is a high ranking executive of the IPC Strategic Investment Department. And like a sketcher players, his whole personality is centered around gambling and you definitely will see that in some of his abilities. But it turns out he's actually a really solid unit. Starting off with the path that he follows, he follows the path of preservation, which if you don't know, tends to be a super correct path and can really help you with sustaining your characters. Without the need for any kind of healer like Quohuo or Luocha. But the downside of a preservation unit is that they don't really do much else apart from shield. I mean, look at Japard. He's not the best character in the world and you know, he's all right, he's fine, but you don't really see anyone building it. But then there are also some amazing preservation characters like Fushuan, who, you know, everyone uses and she has some really cool abilities while also keeping all your teammates safe. And well, I think Aventurine is another case of Fushuan where he's actually an amazing preservation character. And better yet, he deals imaginary damage, which obviously there's a lot of people out there that don't really build many imaginary characters. I mean, off the top of my head, I think the only one I've got built is like Dr. Ratio. Now, yeah, there are some people that do use imaginary quite a lot and, you know, they're going to be really enjoying this character. But Aventurine, even if you don't have many other imaginary characters, he's just amazing on his own. So let's go into his actual abilities here. As I said, we actually got to try him out in the story. So you know everything there is to know about him and what his skills do. I'm just starting off with his normal attack, which is straight bat. As I said, this is all going to be gambling themed, which I think is really cool. And I definitely recommend playing the story because he has such an interesting backstory and just his overall like voice acting, character design, just everything is amazing. But yeah, his normal attack is just an ordinary normal attack. It deals imaginary damage equal to 50% of Aventurine's defense to a single enemy, which again, he's a preservation character, so it will scale off defense. But now let's go over to a skill where it gets a little bit more interesting. So for Aventurine's skill, which is called Cornerstone Deluxe, if you don't know, he's one of the cornerstones of the IPC. That's why it has Cornerstone in the name. But what it does, it provides allies with a fortified wager shield, which is pretty much like any other preservation character where they, you know, give a shield to a character and protect them from incoming attacks. And this can block damage equal up to 16% of Aventurine's defense, plus 80, lasting for three turns. When repeatedly gaining fortified wager, the shield effect can stack up to 200% of the shield provided by the current skill, meaning that the shield actually protects you even more the more you gain fortified wager, which is insane. But it doesn't end there. Let's just move on to his talent here, so it makes a lot more sense. This is called Shot Loaded Right, and it says that the effect res increases by 13% for a single ally with fortified wager. So not only do they get a shield, they also get effect res, which obviously if I slide this up, it will go up the more you level the talent, which is amazing. And when this ally character gets attacked, Aventurine gains one point of blind bet, which essentially is his passive ability, and I will go more into that because it is amazing, and honestly, I haven't really seen anything like this from any other character, and it's really what makes him an amazing character to pull for. When Aventurine has fortified wager, he can resist crowd control debuffs, which again is amazing. He's literally resisting debuffs, and this effect can trigger again after two turns. Aventurine additionally gains one point of blind bet after getting attacked, which whenever you actually play Aventurine, it means he gets two points when he gets attacked rather than just one, because he gets one point of blind bet whenever he gets attacked as he is an allied character, but then he also gets another point for him literally being Aventurine and being attacked, giving him two points, which add on to his passive and are just amazing. And then they actually go into what blind bet means. It says, upon reaching seven points of blind bet, Aventurine consumes the seven points to launch a seven hit follow-up attack, with each hit dealing imaginary damage equal to 25% of Aventurine's defense to a single random enemy. Blind bet is capped at 10 points. So one of the amazing things that they don't really mention in this, and they kind of, you know, subtly mention it, but don't point it out very obviously. Whenever he reaches seven points, he deals this damage, but it's capped at 10 which means you can actually overstack and get more points, which you can use after he uses that blind bet. So you could start again with like three more points, which is actually amazing. And not only that, just blind bet in general, dealing imaginary damage equal to 25% of Aventurine's defense is just amazing too, because it means he's not just shielding, but he's also dishing out a ton of damage as well. But these abilities don't just end there. It gets even better. And I will go into it even more whenever we scroll down to more of his choices and everything, because it's actually mental. Let's just go to his ultimate really quick, which is called Roulette Shark. And again, I really love this kind of like gambling kind of 
thing they've got going on. It's very nice and very aesthetically pleasing. But what it does, it randomly gains one to seven points of blind bet. So already that could be insane. Imagine getting the full seven and just instantly getting a follow-up attack. Then inflicts unnerve on a single enemy target, lasting for three turns. And then deals imaginary damage equal to 162% of Aventurine's defense to a single target enemy, which again is just even more damage going off. This is actually super good for a preservation character. And finally, when an ally hits an unnerved enemy target, the crit damage dealt increases by 9%. And again, this will increase the more you level it. So if you level up to 10, he will actually do 270% of his defense, which is insane. And not only that, he also gains that blind bet points, which means he's going to be doing even more damage with the follow-up attack as well. So all around, these abilities are just insane. So not only does he protect his characters, but he dishes out a ton of damage and provides him with a ton of effect resistance, which is just super good if you plan to run some kind of offensive team that you don't really want to run a healer like Quora or Lorocha, who just over time heals your characters and doesn't do much damage. I mean, she does provide some buffs and stuff, but with Aventurine, he's making sure that all your characters are safe while also dealing like a ton of damage. Now, if we go down to his traces here, this is where it gets even better. This first one called Leverage says for every 100 of Aventurine's defense that exceeds 1,600, increase his own crit damage by 2%, up to maximum increase of 48%, which looking at all the abilities and also this means that you're going to be building him on a very, very high defense build. We haven't really seen much of that recently. I mean, you do need a lot of defense on a lot of preservation characters, but you need a ton of defense on Aventurine. I mean, you can just use all of those rubbish pieces that you got, but which you thought was rubbish. And it says like defense percent and, and flat defense and stuff like that. You can stick it on Aventurine and it'll be insane because it increases his crit damage whenever it goes over 1,600. And it also means you don't really have to worry about running crit rate pieces or or finding crit rate substats because if you put it all into defense he's pretty much got all of his crit rate there then for his next one which is called hot hand it says when the battle starts grant all allies a fortified wager shield your shield effect is equal to 100 of the one provided by the skill lasting for three turns so pretty much it just gives your characters fortified wager which again is amazing and finally for the last one which is called bingo which could really change up teams that you use with aventurine it says after an ally with fortified wager launches a follow-up attack aventurine accumulates one blind bet point meaning that you want to be running a lot of follow-up characters in your teams because that means you can get even more blind bet points which in turn does even more damage whenever you have Aventurine on your team and this effect can be triggered up to three times and his trigger count resets at the start of Aventurine's turn after Aventurine launches his talents follow-up attack provides all allies with fortified wager that can block damage equal to 7% of Aventurine's defense plus 96 so again you're getting even more fortified wager keeping you even more protected and just doing even more damage with Aventurine and additionally grants a fortified wager that can block damage equal to 7% of Aventurine's defense plus 96 to the ally with the lower shield effect lasting for three turns so he pretty much just helps out the most like defenseless character which again is amazing below here there are eidlons and stuff but i don't really know if i want to go into it i'm not sure if it's leaks so i might just avoid that and i will make a follow-up video if you do want to see a follow-up video on his build and just everything to do with him even more then just let me know in the comments because i really want to know if you guys are actually interested in him and if you want to know how to build him but overall just looking at all of this kit and everything it seems like aventurine is going to be a very worthwhile character i mean you can see here that they've rated him as S tier on Genshin Lab, and I'm sure he will stay that way. He'll probably be that high on other sites as well. But now for the actual question. Should you pull for him? Well, there are many characters coming out in the future which you may want to pull for. I mean, me personally, I really want to get Robin because I think she's a very like nice looking character. And I've seen a few, you know, little uh, hints at what, what she's going to be like. And I think she'll be super useful in my team. So just take that into account whenever you're playing Aventurine. I mean, if you're a full on whale and just pull for every character anyways, then, you know, what are you doing here? <laughs> but if you do really like his character design and you really like his abilities, then he's going to be an amazing character to pull. And I really suggest that you do pull for him. But only if you aren't saving for any future characters. Because as I said before, we've got like Boot Hill coming out. So if you really like him and need to save your Stellar Jade, then I'd definitely save it because I always believe in just pulling for a character that you like rather than meta. But in terms of the meta and just overall ability, he is going to be an absolutely cracked character and a must pull character. If you're pulling for meta, then yes, get him. You know, there is no question about it. He is an insane preservation character that deals a ton of damage. And as for overall investment and stuff, I'm not sure if he actually needs his five star light cone, but it'll be absolutely insane if he doesn't and you could just rely on some battle pass light cone or just some free to play light cone which i'm sure he will work well with and as for teams if you've got characters that deal a lot of follow-up damage like himiko and dr ratio then i would definitely suggest pulling for him as well because he can work amazingly with them and gain those stacks from those follow-up attacks so he is a very follow-up attack orientated character but that doesn't mean you just need follow-up attack characters to you know run him i mean if you don't have a himiko or you haven't built your dr ratio for some reason i mean just looking at this stuff he could probably work pretty well with acron i mean yes they don't synergize super well in terms of the follow-up attack stuff but in terms of 
preservation and just dealing damage. Imagine having Aventurine and Acheron and then some buffers like Sparkle and stuff on your team boosting their damage then you know your team's going to be pretty much unstoppable and as I said there's no need for a healer so you can run a super offensive team which is great. So yeah if you're looking for a super meta character that will be amazing especially in places like the Memory of Chaos then I would 100% suggest pulling for him and with some of the future characters we don't really know what they're going to be like so they could always end up worse than Aventurine and I mean just looking at this now he looks like a super good character and we know that he's a super good character whereas the other ones it could be up for a debate but if you do like the look of characters like Robin and Boot Hill and are a free to play orientated player or you just you're a light spender then I would definitely suggest just going for the character that you like the most because that's what I do I won't be pulling for Aventurine here because I'm not a super meta player don't get me wrong I do like big damage and I do like you know doing well but also I want to save up for characters that I like like Robin so me personally I'm not going to be pulling on Aventurine but if you do want an amazing character and you don't really care about the looks and stuff and you just want big damage and just the best team possible then I would definitely pull on Aventurine but who knows if he gets a rerun in the future I might actually pull on him because he is that good that he might actually be worth it so I hope I've helped your decision in whether to pull for Aventurine I mean this is a super tough decision because he's an amazing character but he's also surrounded by many other amazing characters I mean we just had Acheron you may have run out of jades and tickets to actually spend on him and we've only recently found out about his kit so you may be punching a wall right now you know that's just bad luck but he will always come around in a rerun so if you enjoyed this video then don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and yeah i'll see you in the next one that's all see ya